slow flow and restorative practice with me, Lizzie Lassiter. Welcome. Oh. I hope you're here because you found it through my newsletter, Rest with Lizzie Lassiter. Not, I hope you will go there, www.lizzie.lassiter immediately and sign up for my free newsletter. There's content every Sunday encouraging you to practice and also stuff like this, full length free practices. The sequence we're going to do today is about sort of thematically connecting ourselves, moving ourselves, shifting ourselves away from the brain, the thinking, the voice, the mean girl voice inside of my head and moving ourselves instead, shifting down towards the heart energy. And if we begin now by closing our eyes and finding a comfortable seat, it means tipping the pelvis slightly forward and making sure that the lower belly is soft. The spine is lengthening up. With the eyes closed, turning your attention inward. We'll sit here for just a couple minutes of silence. In this spaciousness, my suggestion for you <clears throat> is to just notice as the thinking begins to bubble up and notice if you can gently tug your attention down into the heart space. For me, they're often, it's like two different radio channels. She is mean and judgy and you shouldn't have done that. And why did he say that? And I no, 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 no. <laughs> but if I can shift down here, warm, open, kind, loving, generous. And there are no words here. Okay, so sip my hot lemon. And we'll get started just, let's say, three minutes together before we move to the mat. Continuing to slide that attention down away from feeding the thinking in the brain and the rehearsing what you're going to say or should have said. And instead, moving yourself down to the heart.
Gently blink your eyes open and exhaling. Last thing I'll say before we move to the mat, if you like this practice, very much inspired by our Taking Refuge course, which you can find here at www.lassiter.yoga, as well as you wanna come do this type of work with me in person. I'm teaching two retreats in 2013, <laughs> 2023, one in Montana and one in Italy. Montana is August, Italy is September. You'll find those under current offerings at lizzie.yoga. Let's move back, slide back to the mat. You're gonna need a lot of props today. There's no way around that. It's just a fact. Spread the feet wide. Let's start in Uttanasana. Inhale the breath. Exhaling. One more time. Inhale the breath, sweep the arms up. And without diving or poking the chest, simply soften and fold down. It's Uttanasana. The fingers, tips come to the mat. And then bring your attention to letting go of the back of the neck. Let the back of the neck be long. Shifting the weight forward so that the heels and the knees and the hips line up, not that you're hanging back here. I have to keep remembering to release the chin, release the skull. One more breath. You might want to inhale a little bit. Maybe walk your hands up to the top thighs. And then big inhalation. Keep this up. And back down. Take a blanket now. Yoga blanket or something from your couch and roll it up. You don't want it to be too thick and you can kind of modulate how thick you make it by just sort of unrolling. Place that in the hip creases, inhale. Exhale, resisting the urge to swan dive without disturbing the natural curves of the vertebral column. Come down, catching that blanket in towards the belly. Same pose here with the added pressure on the abdomen. Bringing more and more of your attention to the breath, breathing through the nose, the mouth is gently closed. And inhaling. Come up to standing. Mm. Release the blanket. Blanket is so great for if you're on your cycle, ladies, or if you are having cramps, constipation, that extra pressure into the belly. Get two blocks if you have them. Now we're going to do Prasarita Parutanasana, spread the legs wide, wide leg forward fold. So it's the same pose, but from the upper body, the lower body spreads out a little bit. Hands on the hips, inhale the breath. Turn the toes slightly in. Inhale. Stay out, surrender, fold down. Release. So the blocks are just here to give yourself a little break to make it a little bit easier for yourself, depending on the hamstrings that you have. <laughs> the hamstrings that you may have brought with you to class today, to the practice today, to the mat today. So if you're if you're feeling more tight, you just do less here. So it's a radical concept. 
just do last. You can also use the blocks underneath the forehead. Make the pose a little bit more restorative. Walk the fingertips out in front of you, lengthen. And walk the fingertips back towards the feet. I like to wiggle my feet a little bit closer together and then big inhalation. As you come up, maybe sweep the arms if it feels good up to Namaste. Exhale. Let's do that again. Lengthening, linking, linking this simple movement with breath inhale. Once again, inhale. And exhale. So this is sort of a physical embodiment of that idea from our opening meditation. So we're inhaling. And then here you can imagine moving the energy from the brain down to the heart. One more time, inhale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's take Prasarita Padutanasan one more time. Spread the feet. And we're going to add a twist in the pose. My, ooh, my AirPods just don't love forward bends. They always want to jump out of my ears. Inhale. And we exhale. Fold forward. Flex the side for a moment. Bow the head. So remember letting go of any tension holding resistance. So often I find myself practicing this pose like this, like I'm looking up, I'm already thinking or moving forward with my mind, but can you do less in the brain? Come on to the fingertips with an inhalation. And here I like to take a block in the center my right hand is coming onto the block. And I'm going to twist a little bit. Just gently, don't force anything. Three breaths here. And take the second side, unwinding left hand on the block or fingertips on the floor. Just twist any amount towards the right. And really. Now walk your hands over to the left side, shifting the hips. We'll take another twist. Feeling that. That right inner thigh, those adductors. And if you like, bring your block over here, twist a little bit asymmetrically here. And release. Take the second side. First, walk the fingertips over, shifting the hips. And if you like, take a twist. Right hand comes up to the waist. And release. Hang down for one breath. And oh, come up to standing. Come all the way up to standing. We'll take Tadasana. I like with the palms up in a sort of receptive 
gesture to be open, not having all the answers. We'll do a pause for pranayama here, standing pranayama. Inhale the breath. To three or to five, counting on your own, and then pause at the top of the breath slightly and exhale to the same number. So you could inhale to three or four or five, pause, exhale to three or four or five, pause. The pause is brief, like a count of one. It's just, a, it's like a, a noticing that we're between the breaths. We're inhaling and then I notice I'm not, and then I'm exhaling. We'll do about five rounds. Here, shifting the weight back towards the heel, softening the lower belly. We'll begin. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Continuing on your own. Come down onto your hands and knees. We'll do a little bit of cat cow, a little dog pose. Yes. What's a day without dog pose? And then I thought a few supported forward bends and then Shavasana. All fours, exhale, drop the head, lift the belly. And inhaling. Reverse that shape. Flowing with your breath. A few more rounds like this. And come to neutral, turn the toes, lift the belly, exhale. Lift up and back to downward facing. Again, releasing the back of the neck here, pressing into the palms and shifting the weight back into the legs. Stay really close to your breath. And look forward, bring the right knee forward in between the hands, coming into pigeon. I love the blocks here to make me taller, feel taller. My fingertips on the blocks or on the floor, if you don't have them, and lift up. Feel that lengthening all along the front body. And exhale, hold forward. I'm gonna take a block under my forehead.
few breaths here. And inhale and come up on the fingertips and press back to downward facing. Look forward and bring the left knee all the way through. Come up onto the fingertips or the blocks lifting up. And exhale, fall down over that front leg. And then inhale, walk back up. Then just bring that back leg around and the soles of your feet together. Inhale the breath. Baddha any amount bowing forward, it might be here. It might be here coming to a block. If you have a chair or a couch, that feels really good to Bow the forehead onto some, some support. When you find yourself thinking in these poses, connecting with your brain energy, the chatter, the mental chatter, see if you can use the breath to invite yourself down towards the heart energy. And inhale, come up. Let's do Janu Shashasana. And what I'm going to take is a little bit of support under my bum I'm using this courageous tune-up ball yoga tune-up ball i know you most of you won't have that at home but you can use a pillow from your couch or a blanket something to just elevate slightly the oh, it was quite quick. <laughs> elevate slightly the sit bones so that your pelvis can tip forward into your forward bend most of us, when we sit flat on the floor, are hanging back and rounded. So a little something that can help shift you forward before, so that the pelvis actually starts the forward bend. Before you take the forward bend, the pelvis is already moving into flexion. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll start with my left leg straight. We will turn around. You can see that my left leg straight, bending my right knee like that. And I take this little wiggle and put it 
just so it tips the pelvis slightly. So I know that I like lots of support here. And exhale. Begin to walk the fingertips forward, bowing the head. Your pose might be here today or this lifetime. Doesn't matter. We're not really here to make the perfect shapes. I think that's a huge misconception in yoga, that it's about the shapes that we make. It's not. It's about the interior experience with the breath and the shapes provide a background or an opportunity for us to play these games, these these rehearsals, these exercises, these uh, to, to move from the mental chatter to the heart energy as we're playing with today, for example, to stay connected to the breath. The shapes are less important. Or as I, the longer I practice, the less and less important the shapes are becoming to me. And say it that way. I need the shapes, but they're just the beginning. So I like to take some support like this here, lengthening the back of the neck. So I'm not supporting like this. So that even here, I'm doing a forward bend, not a back bend in the cervical spine. Here is the anchor of the pose, this top back thigh where it meets the pelvis. So from here, for you, hopefully you can feel some opening and stretching on that back flank. Couple more breaths. Hmm. Inhaling, come up, take the second side. Grab a hold of the inner knee, helps to bend, move some of the flesh out of the way. And then that tilting something, could be a folded up blanket or a pillow, come onto the fingertips, inhale. And exhale, soften forward. And then inhale, come up. Let's do one more seated forward bend. And show up. Yeah. I want to bring up the blanket that we had at the very beginning of the practice in Uttanasana. <clears throat> Again, sitting on something to tip me forward. I'm using this ball. You could also take a blanket and put it under your bum. I'm going to do... Pashimotanasan, but my legs are a little bit wider. They're not uh, right together because of the blocks. And then I'm gonna roll this here in the belly. Oh, so nice. Inhale the breath. <clears throat> so always ending with, the way I was taught, always ending with a symmetrical pose. Letting go of your head here. With each exhalation, inviting yourself down.
towards the heart energy. And inhale, coming up. There you have it, yogis. It's now time for Shavasana. I'm gonna clear everything away from my space and spread out a big blanket so that it's really soft and warm and cozy. You're probably at home, so you can find a floor you have in your house. You can go to a carpet or practice on top of a rug. It's padding for your bones and it's also warmth. So I use this big wool blanket on top of my yoga mat. It's like this to create a space. Now, what I wanted to Practice today is a variation called Stonehenge. So I'm gonna use a bolster and the two blocks. Now, if you don't have these fancy props, then what I suggest you do is set yourself up so that your feet are on a couch, like a low couch would be best, or a low chair, so that the backs of your knees are supported. Or if you can somehow, create a shape like this. This could be like a thick couch cushion that you take down and you prop up on blocks or something else you have. This is about the height that we're looking for. Now, we just need something to support the head. I'm gonna use a pillow, it'd be uncomplicated. Hello, from the couch. And definitely want one or two blankets for warmth on top and something to cover your eye. I'm going to be wearing one of my signature third eye map product placement. You can find them here at lizzie.yoga. But you can use a scarf or a yoga eye bag, whatever you have. As I take my last sip, of hot lemon, I encourage you now to make any small adjustments to your physical body, to your physical space. They're gonna help you relax more deeply in Shavasana. So getting a glass of water, going to the loo, putting on warm socks. These small details are going to make a difference for your practice. Okay, and I'm going to set a little timer for us. Here, a little chime. I'll be going. I'll leave it right here so you would hear it as well. Let's do it. Shavasana is. Perhaps yoga's most powerful pose. It's a moment of disidentification. When we let go of all of the roles we play, the masks we wear. I'm really supporting the backs of my knees here. On the support of the bolster or the couch. And then right now I'm going to cover up. And cover the eyes. From the outside, it's really simple what we do in Shavasana. We just stop doing everything else. Phone is on airplane, of course. Your door is closed. 
you're unavailable. But the interior work of Shavasana is not that simple. Again, today I would suggest when thoughts arise, because inevitably they will, that's what your brain is here to do, generate thoughts. When thoughts arise, see if you can invite yourself back and down into the heart space. I've been playing with this recently in my own practice. And for me, it's something I'm, I'm really starting to feel and really feel that shift. And I let go of the spinning, thinking, judging, rehearsing mind of what I'm gonna say, argument, why I'm right <laughs> about everything. With this pillow here, turn it under a little bit so that the chin is gently softened. When I let go of that thinking, spinning, judging mind, I invite myself, I can't say it really any other way. It does feel like it's down into the heart. The heart is singing a different tune. So we'll lie here together for a few minutes of silence. And then the bells will ring. And we'll say goodbye.
Begin to shift your body out of the pose. Bending one. Find your way into your side where you're going to rest for a few breaths of recovery. What a luxury to simply sit, lie, with your hands and love them together into And bring them to rest on your apple. Inhaling the breath, open the palms away from the body. With an exhalation, bring them together in front of your sweetheart. Namaste. May we live like the loaded at home in the muddy water. Thank you so much for your practice today. For your time, your attention, your love. Comment below this YouTube video if you felt that shift from brain to heart. I would love to know. I'll give you the websites one more time. Lizzie.yoga, L-I-Z-Z-I-E dot yoga. That's where you'll find my retreats and my newsletter to sign up for. Lassiter.yoga, www.lassiter.yoga is the course called Taking Refuge that I mentioned. Have a great day.